Hi everyone, glad you joined us for today's worship service. We are back in our series, A New Hope. For today's passage, we will be looking at Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 41. And I would like for us to turn our Bibles there. We will look at it in a while. But let us begin to the word of prayer. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence here. And uh, we recognize that you are at work in us and all around us. May you pour out your spirit in a fresh and a powerful way. God, that we would be transformed from deep within, and that may you use us as instruments of transformation to a world that is in need of healing, restoration, and transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, many of us who have been doing online um, Zoom meetings and video recordings have learned some techniques to make our meetings more exciting. At isa na nga dun sa mga ginagawa natin, yung virtual background. The idea here is that you can change your background to of a place where you want to appear like uh, you're somewhere else. For example, um, this is a picture of me in Zamboanga. And this is me in Cataño de Oro. And this is me in La Union getting ready to surf. And this is me right in Victory Malate. Of course, virtual backgrounds make, make me appear like I can be in different places all in a day and all these pictures are actually just taken in our home with just a blue screen or a green screen or the help of an app now when you're excited to go somewhere else so virtual background lang, okay na and you can imagine yourself being somewhere else having a virtual experience of course may mga virtual realities or vr na rin tayo that simulates the experience na akala mo talaga totoo na and uh, of course uh, some of you may have tried that video games that looked and felt so real. But I'm sure all of you will agree with me that no matter how great the virtual reality or the virtual experience is, it is nothing compared to the real deal. In our series, A New Hope, we've been looking at God's Word, and His Word gives us a picture of hope, it gives us a picture of an expectation of God's promises. Of course, the promises that when they come to pass, it is really even so much better, far beyond what we can ask, think, or imagine. Now, more specifically, in this series, we've been looking at who Jesus is as revealed in scriptures and uh, what he did for us in history and how when we believe him and receive it in faith, we experience him in such a powerful way that it is so much better than we could ever ask or dream or imagine. We started this series during Palm Sunday and this is the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem with a cot or a donkey and uh, he was greeted by the people with Hosanna to the son of David, a sign that indeed a new hope has come, that Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David has come to deliver them. And then we followed it up with Resurrection Sunday. Of course, yung, yung nangyari after Palm Sunday was uh, unexpected. Okay, the people did not really expect Jesus to be uh, crucified, Jesus dying and, and getting buried. But during Resurrection Sunday, something unexpected, although it has been predicted and prophesied many times over, that Jesus would come to life. And when, when the disciples saw the risen Christ, it expanded their hope even in a bigger way measure knowing that christ is risen and that he is risen indeed that the good news is not that just the messiah has come it just got even better that the messiah is risen of course uh, after that we've had a short break and we, we talked about psalm 23 in a series in time of perspective with a mother's day celebration in between so today we will continue with a new hope a new hope series on pentecost now, what is Pentecost? Why are we celebrating it? And why does it mean a new hope for us? Pentecost is a term that means 50th. It is only found in the New Testament. And it is a Jewish festival 50 days after the Passover. In uh, Exodus, it is known as the Feast of Harvest. And in Numbers, it is known as the Day of First Fruits. Of course, culminating or the final, the final celebration of the Feast of Weeks seven weeks of celebration and of course it is uh, about the completion of a great harvest Kaya nga, day of first fruits on the 50th 
Now, the day of Pentecost is celebrated today in the Christian church as the day when the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles. And uh, this is the time when the apostles, the disciples, spoke in new tongues, they prophesied, and, and many people under Peter's preaching were cut to the heart, and 3,000 people were baptized and added in one day. Imagine that 3,000 people baptized and added to the church in one day. This is considered the birth of the New Testament church, including the first fruits of the many believers coming from different nations. As Christians today, Pentecost definitely meant a better hope for us. What was celebrated as the coming down of the fire of God during the time of Moses became the coming down of the fire of God, descending on the disciples as prophesied. What was celebrated as the giving of the law of Moses for the Jewish people actually became the giving of the Holy Spirit for the believer. And what was celebrated as the Mosaic law being written by the finger of God on stone tablets eventually became the giving of the Spirit of God, writing His law in our hearts, marking a new way of living, and giving us a new power for living. Pentecost is a better hope because what was celebrated as God with us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is also now celebrated as God in us, in the person of the Holy Spirit, making God's presence manifest wherever God's people are. And that makes everything new and better for us. Of course, the hinge, the deciding factor in all of this is actually the one that David prophesied about, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that they were hoping to be, the son of David, the prophesied Messiah. And of course, Jesus is indeed the son of David, and so much more. You know, the Gospel writers, uh, Matthew in particular, started the Gospel by referring to Jesus as the son of David and the son of Abraham. Mark calls him the son of God. And Luke, usually in the Gospel, referred to him as the son of man, another title of the Messiah, and of course associated not just with his humanity, but his divinity. And in the book of Acts, which is part two of the Gospel of Luke, he actually referred to him in verse 36. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This truth is so powerful that the people who heard it were cut to the heart and they asked for the proper response. And of course, uh, the rest is history as we say it. 3,000 people were added and they were baptized and they become part of what we now know as the church that has impacted different nations and continues to impact the different nations throughout the world. So you mga Jewish people from different nations that came back for the Feast of Pentecost went back to their own nation, celebrating a new life, celebrating a new way of living, celebrating a new power, and fulfilling a new mission, being given a better hope. Now, there are a lot of things about Jesus, who He is, and what He has done for us that actually brings us hope, real hope, tangible hope, lasting hope that makes Him and what He did for us so much better than what we could ever dream or hope it to be. From this passage, several important points need to be made certain. And the first one is found in these verses. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Here, Peter referred to David as a patriarch. After all, he is the father of the royal family. And not only that, he was also mentioned as a prophet, having spoken of what is to come of the coming Messiah. And of course, here he quoted something from Psalm 
16, verse 8 to 11, which David himself wrote. And he was talking about how the coming Messiah is someone who will not be abandoned to Hades, the place where the dead goes, and his body will not experience decay, but that God will raise him up. And Peter, together with all the disciples, were witnesses of this fact. They were attesting to this, that this Jesus is better than David, Yes, he is a patriarch. Yes, he is a prophet. But this Jesus is more than that because he is the father, the beginning of many who will rise from the dead and who will be resurrected. He is better than the prophet David because he himself is the fulfillment of the prophecy, the risen and resurrected Christ who brought new hope for them and for us because the resurrection of Christ means that he has power over sin and death. Alam naman natin in scripture that there are many others who were raised to life, but their bodies continued to decay, and they ended up dying and being buried again. Of course, ito rin yung sinasabi ni Peter about David. Though David prophesied about someone who will come, and of course, many thought it was David, pero sinasabi ni Peter dito, si David himself was also buried, and their tomb still stands during that time. But when Peter was talking about this Jesus, he was talking about this Jesus who was the first fruit of one raised to a new kind of life with a body made perfect. One that is not subject anymore to weaknesses and aging and death and one that would live eternally. And the resurrection of Christ brought a new hope that was so real that it removed any uncertainties on what happens after we die. Hindi pa sila ano ba talaga mangyayari? May life ba after death or what not? And, and the hope that is so real that Peter, who denied Jesus three times, experienced forgiveness that was so liberating. And the hope that was so tangible that it removed their fear of death so much that they can face death head on whenever they were threatened and persecuted. And it was a hope that is so lasting that they ended up enduring until the end. For they live not just for the temporary, but they are living for the eternal. The resurrection of Christ teaches us that there is life beyond the grave. That there's hope against sin and death. And even though sin and death afflicts us all. And that life is so much better than we could ever hope it to be. What was true for Jesus will one day be true for everyone who believes. Think about that. No more temptation, no more guilt, no more shame, no more condemnation, no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrows, no more tears, no more death, no more decay. And when that happens, it will be better than what we imagine it to be. Because what is corruptible is now changed into something incorruptible. And the great thing that we will enjoy is something that is not temporary but would last for all eternity. Is this what you are hoping for? In Christ, his hope is sure. The resurrected and risen Christ brings new hope. Furthermore, in verse 33, this is what it says. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God. This verse highlights to us that Jesus is not just resurrected. He is also exalted or lifted high. And the Bible says, at the right hand of God. The word the resurrected and exalted sounds the same and the meaning may seem similar. Resurrected being raised up and exalted being lifted up. But when we think of exaltation, it implies not just a bodily resurrection or a raising up in status, but that Jesus ascended to the heavens and will one day return, just like what he said. And this also means that Jesus was given glory and honor, being exalted at the right hand of God, or in some portions of scripture, seated at the right hand of God. This means the completion of his redemptive work, thus the term seated. And of course, exaltation meant also having authority above all. Above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and above every other name. He is not just the Christ, the Messiah, or Savior. He is 
Lord. Peter yeah, even was quoting Psalm 110 verse 1, where he says this in Acts chapter 2 verse 34 and 35. It says here, For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Jesus, long before he was born, was seen as Lord and was even referred to by Lord God, the Father himself, as Lord. He is the true Son of God and the true Son of Man, aside from being the Son of David. The exaltation of Christ means that he has power over all things. Of course, we know that uh, during his earthly ministry, see Jesus, he demonstrated power over sickness and diseases by healing sick people. He demonstrated authority over nature. Remember, he caused water to turn into wine. He multiplied the bread and the fish. And he commanded the storm and the waves to be still. He demonstrated authority over demonic powers and, and casted them out of tormented people. He is victorious over every temptation, over sin, even demonstrated authority to forgive people. He is victorious over death, not just raising people back to life, but being resurrected himself. And after his resurrection, he was exalted. He is King of kings and Lord of lords, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise, and all his enemies shall be made into a footstool. This hope is so real that the disciples you know, ended up surrendering their all to Jesus, not just as their Savior, but recognized Him as their rightful Master. It is a hope that is so tangible that it caused them to face all the challenges in life with confidence and assurance that they shall overcome it. And it is a hope that is so lasting that even if things are not going according to their expectation, they will not deny their faith in Jesus, who is sovereign over all. Peter's preaching continued in verse 33. And having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. Jesus is Lord and Christ. He is the anointed one. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon him. And he is one in whom the Spirit of God descended during his baptism. And he is the one that was foretold to baptize others, not just with Holy Spirit, but also with fire. Jesus spoke of how it is better that he would leave the disciples because by then the Holy Spirit will be poured out unto others. Jesus is the anointed one who has come to anoint others too. He is the Lord, God who is for us and with us. And now during Pentecost, He is God poured out to be in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And this is where the new hope also is getting better. Jesus did not just come to give us a brand new start. He did not just come to save us from our sins so that we could be forgiven. More than giving us a new life, He gave us a new power for living. More than just saving us from our guilt and paying the penalty of our sins so that we can receive forgiveness. He came to with his power that we may overcome temptation and live godly lives. The Holy Spirit who is in Christ is poured out to those who believe. Jesus said that this is a better hope for us, that we should hope for it and expect it to happen. And Peter is saying that it has now come because through the person of the Holy Spirit, God's presence is now in each and every believer. And this is not just something that is temporary. It is something that is given as a guarantee that we are His and that one day He will take us to be with Him and dwell with Him in His presence forever. Verse 39 says, For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Peter was saying this in Acts chapter 2, that the Holy Spirit was poured out to the believers who were there, the 120 disciples 
who were waiting in Jerusalem for the promise as Jesus instructed them. It's not just the Holy Spirit that is for them, but the Holy Spirit that is also for everyone who were listening that day. And those who would believe it, including the 3,000 who were baptized and were added, and not just them, but even for their children and for everyone who are far off and everyone whom the Lord our God will call to himself. And that includes you. And that includes me. It is a hope that is so real that the disciples who were praying in, in hiding because of fear that what happened to Jesus might happen to them started going out preaching the gospel boldly. It was a hope that is so tangible that those who received the transforming power of the Holy Spirit started ministering in power and signs and wonders and miracles accompanied the preaching of the word, just like what Jesus said. And it was such a lasting hope that they started living holy lives, living out the holy calling that they have received from the Lord. I know that many of us, if not all of us, were hoping for a better 2020. And it seemed like this year is not really what we hope it to be. Not better, but worse. I believe the Word of God is encouraging us today that we don't have to be hopeless. That we don't have to grow tired of always hoping for the best, but only to end up having our hopes deferred. Let's put our hopes in Jesus. Things may seem worse and difficult and challenging right now. But in Him, things will definitely end up being so much better than we could ever imagine. Are you ready for a new hope? A real, tangible, lasting hope. Let us turn from our wicked ways and ask God for the forgiveness of our sins and for a fresh and deep feeling of the Holy Spirit that we may have power to know Jesus, the grace to have a brand new start, and a new power for living. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that he wants to pour out in each and every one of us. Let us pray. Jesus, I acknowledge that you are the risen Christ, the exalted one, and the anointed one. We ask God that you would forgive us of our sins and we repent and turn away from our wicked ways and we return to you, our Lord, our Christ, our Savior. And we ask God that you fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may know you more and that we may have the power to live a life that honors you and pleases you from this day forward. Jesus name.